Good morning, everybody. I think it'd be a good idea for us as on the committee to identify ourselves, just for any viewers. Bob Connors, Annapolis Way Chair of this committee. I'm Jeff Shaw, uh, Principal of Context Architecture. Uh, Eric Swan, Vice Chair, Old Farm Way. John Keller, uh, Scotland Road, uh, Clark. Uh, Kevin Heffernan, OPM and Vertex. Mike Riley, Police Chief. We have an agenda, gentlemen. Does anyone have a copy of the agenda? So the first order of business is just to review our December meeting summary. <coughs> you would have received these electronically. Any uh, comments, corrections, or concerns? The only thing I would do is I, I would incorporate the uh, meeting summary as an attachment to this that was provided by Jeff Shaw. Okay. And so we have a, a motion. Make a motion to accept the meeting minutes. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor. All right. All right. So, John, if you just make a notation that there'll be an attachment of uh, context is meeting somewhere. I, actually, I think between the way we do this and the future is probably similar to that. Uh, I think we had passed Kevin originally with providing the details. So, John, if you can just incorporate that as an attachment into you know, the, our, our stuff, I think that would be great. Okay, Jeff Shaw, update. I, I have some handouts here that Jeff had sent electronically. Uh, in his usual fashion, he has provided adult-sized copies of uh, his work, uh, where I have, uh, I saved a small tree. So, go through this. All right, so just some housekeeping issues. I want to pass out. We have a change order. We have a change order submittal uh, from context uh, for revised schematic design. Certainly we all Recall that we we went through an exhaustive approach of standalone police station modifications, combined police, uh, town hall, and we actually, as I recall, had looked at the fire station and did some detail on that. That would we did a programming study for the fire right. station. So now we're back to adding uh, the final task of you know the, the project at hand. So. If anyone has any questions on this, uh, Veritex, the process we're going to use is Kevin's going to review all payment applications. And then he will issue a letter of uh, recommendation. And he has submitted that uh, here. We'll make that part of our approval. So do we have any questions on this? I, I think we, we're all aware of this and actually awaiting it. Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we accept this change order from Vertex for the additional work. Second. I'll second the motion. All right, any, any discussion? Um, the amount paid to date? Um, I actually have, it's actually on the Vertex, if you look at the Vertex. So those are the contract amounts? Those are the contract amounts, what I do not have, but I'll try to get today, is actually what's been paid to date for everybody. Okay. So you'll see, as we move forward, we're running a line as this contract starts to go down, and that has already been paid out. Yeah. But this reflects the, uh, the 
total contract for phase yeah, two, yeah. Is it fire station study, and then all the other. That sounds like a reasonable number. Well, why don't we do this? If uh, it, it's we not can, so much of a, it's just a point of record that I was trying to make. I wasn't. Um, yeah. And to that, the thirty-eight thousand for adding is not a full schematic design phase. It's incorporating some of the past work. Everything we've already done, just the needed costs of getting us on to the next stage, redrafting yeah. plans, yeah. redesign. It's all good. I'm I'm going to be sitting down with Tracy after this meeting. Mm -hmm. Just to go over, and, and John, if you get some time, I'll ask her if we could do that. So yeah, perfect. Yeah. So we can just uh, fill in some of the blanks here so our work is complete. All right, so no further discussion. The, the only, I would just uh, add that have the committee authorize me to approve this as chair. Yes. Yes. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Bob, if you have a signed copy, if we can make a copy of that signed copy, yeah. then I can put it in our notes as well. Okay. To provide to you. Again, what, what I do, Kev, is I scan everything after the meeting and send it out to the team and then to our stakeholders. So that is almost to a point of an obsession. <laughs> All right, so let me just see. So Jeff, why don't you, if you would, jump in here with your sure. with your comments? Well, I do have some extra copies in case anybody wants. Yeah. Gentlemen, I I get some of the small ones here if you want. These are the <coughs> these were sent to you electronically these last night. Yeah. Um, so we took a stab at um, putting together a plan. Um, that tried to meet the following goals. <laughs> One of which was to solve the space needs uh, puzzle that was before us. Um, as we discussed last time, it was approximately 10,000 square feet that was essentially being recommended and we wanted to get to 9,000 square feet. So the goal of this was to create a building that was approximately 9,000 square feet and meet those same space needs that were approximately 10,000 square feet. Um, so obviously we had to be much more efficient in our design of the building and um, this is the first attempt to do that. What I will say off the bat is that there may be issues with this already. The chief just saw it yesterday. I don't even know if he's had time to look I at it. Know me the on okay. that phone, so, I yeah. that um, so there may be some additional discussion that needs to happen. Um, there, this does not show furnishings in it, so some of the spaces may not be able to be finally confirmed until we actually show you a plan that has furniture so you can see how small or large the space is. But before we get to that point, I just want to make sure that we have the, the right spaces in the building, in the right locations in the building, and on the right floors in the building. Um, and then also to discuss, generally to Bob's uh, comment from the last meeting, um, types of construction so that you know we've got all of the masonry work, the heavy construction in one area of the building, and is that appropriate? So I'll run through the, the layout. Um, the building is in the same orientation as we planned before. Um, in terms of the site plan, I did not do a new site plan, so it's not, I'm not able to sort of describe how the parking and everything else will work. Um, that's in progress, but since it's the same orientation, uh, short end of the, of the building is facing the street. So the, the vestibule main entrance would face the street, which I think is appropriate for this building. Come in that vestibule, uh, there would be an interior door that, depending on the time of day, could be lockable. Um, and then you're inside a public lobby. So those spaces that are labeled and are colored in yellow would be the extent of the, the public access uh, until you are secured from going any further. And I will mention the stair two in a second. Um, but the off of the lobby would have the stair to the upstairs elevator, 
uh, men's and women's bathrooms and the dispatch window. Um, essentially, uh, they serve as the greeter as well. Um, additionally, on this floor, we'd have a main corridor. Off of that corridor, you'd have the back door of the dispatch room, uh, gear storage, the sergeant's office, report writing, which also has um, uh, space for uh, workroom, like copiers, office supplies, that sort of thing. Um, and then you'd have the rear door to the station, commonly what we would assume is the <laughs> staff entrance, uh, where a patrol might, might enter. And then at the back of the building, the patrol garage, as well as the entire booking and detention area, so uh, door into booking, the booking room, uh, which then off of that has the interview room, which could have a second door off of the main corridor. Um, you'd have the access to the two cells, uh, storage closet, holding area, and the sally port. Uh, off of the main patrol garage, we'd have the boiler room and the sprinkler room. And then there's a back, second back stair. The stair two in the front of the building that right now is designed as an open stair to give folks the ability to walk straight upstairs to administration. We can look at closing that off and securing that off in the lobby, but currently that's helping us save a little bit of space um, so we don't have to secure that landing. On the second floor, um, and this is where it gets into maybe the open stair might be warranted because the training room is upstairs, which is also going to double as the emergency operations center and potentially could be used for public meeting space. So if the public was allowed access up there, having an open stair may be <coughs> desirable, but that's again something we can discuss. Off of that second floor lobby, you have the landing for the elevator as well as the admin assistance office. And this is a more of an open area uh, with a window or some secure area overseeing that second floor lobby and then an entrance to a central corridor. Uh, off of that would be the executive officer, um, a staff toilet, the chief's office, and a conference room, as well as the IT closet um, in between the chief's office and the executive officer. On the other side of the corridor would be the training room, so there'd be a door in the public lobby, as well as a door to the private, um, secure side of the building. And then at the back of the building, there'd be the men's and women's locker room, uh, the armory, and the evidence and detectives uh, suite. So you have detectives office, evidence processing, and then from evidence processing, you'd have access to evidence, and from evidence, you'd have access to the drugs and guns storage. So in the upper right-hand corner are spaces that didn't fit into this plan yet. Um, and in both floors are missing a janitor's closet, and the second floor is, is missing what is desirable as another uh, bathroom. Um, and the emergency management office, which doesn't appear in this plan yet. And I would also point out that if it is a public meeting room on the second floor, currently the only public bathrooms are on the first floor, which means that folks have to go up and down stairs or an elevator to get to the bathroom. So um, that currently is, is potentially an issue that we should discuss. I think we've, we've actually <coughs> circled back on that there's not going to be any public access. Okay. This is strictly going to be uh, department training, EOC. If that's the case, then I, then it changes the security of the second floor um, because we can we can treat it as a, a closed access area. It gives us a little bit more flexibility. Might be able Chief, to that's space in that's where we we've, we've decided. Yeah, that, right? we've kind of knocked the size of the training room down a little bit to uh, where the public meeting is not going to take place. They have not right. the size of the training room down. So the total, that's a good point, so the total size of this floor plan is a little over 9,000 square feet. It's about 9,000, almost 200 square feet. Um, that's gross square footage sure. to the outside of the building. Um, the, it's really a rectangular shape uh, with the only bunk being the, the vestibule at the front. Um, the two garage bays exit off the back end of the building and then there's a side entrance for staff which would just have a covering over it. Um, the, the assumption I'm making is that the only walls in the building that are masonry would be around the detention area and the garage areas, so that kind of back corner of the building. Everything else would be steel and concrete framed, um, concrete slab, steel frame. And then we may or may not have wood trusses, maybe or metal trusses, but uh, for the roof. 
So that's generally how it, the, the concept works. Um, I have done a little bit of planning to, to ensure that at least I think the men's and women's room will lay out correctly. Um, the, the plumbing access for that is also over the garages rather than over the detention area or communications rooms and things like that, which are more sensitive to plumbing. Um, but I wasn't able to consolidate all of the plumbing to one area of the building. So there are some bathrooms at the front of the building as well as plumbing at the back of the building. So um, that, that is a consideration here. There would be a little bit more expense with that, but that's somewhat unavoidable for the public bathrooms needing access to the front. So I know you guys just got this, um, and, and you may not have any real comments from it yet, but uh, I'd be willing to entertain whatever you you think your thoughts are. Um, well, we're not going to have public meetings in the station, not planned. Can we not the public bathrooms down to one unisex? So that's something we need to talk about with the building inspector to, and the plumbing to. inspector, um, because it has been um, our experience that most inspectors will want to see um, bath two bathrooms uh, available, one for each uh, gender, but. Um, Rare, rare occasions we have uh, given permission to just install one single user bathroom that's shared. Um, now, given the fact there won't be a training room here, that, that could be a, an advantage to ask for permission for that. But, um, and to prove yeah, out that the staff has. That's right. Well, facilities. we have to meet the plumbing code anyways for the right. number of bathroom facilities for the number of people that are going to be working here. So we'll definitely be meeting that. We'll have enough bathroom space between. The toilets we're, we're already planning plus the locker rooms. Um, it's simply just about, usually in these public safety bills, it's about whether or not the, there's a need in the public side to have two. And um, where we run into it actually more so is small fire stations, like sub, sub, sub fire stations that generally there's usually not a lot of public access to. Um, with the requirement to have two bathrooms, it's usually reasonable to think about one. In this case, the only public access will be to probably to the, the main dispatch and then potentially to that conference room, interview room, um, if you have to take statements or something like that. I mean, my feeling is too much that if you have a training room and you're doing joint training, you, you can have male, female participants, uh, or if we have an emergency and we use an EOC, you can have DPW fire. We, so. If we have to put one in, you're already running kind of the main infrastructure okay. for that. So it's not a big cost in, but it's 70 square feet of space. Right. I was thinking it, cost. Yeah. 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 So you got to put the one, the two. Two doesn't make a difference. Really. It, 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 it's not punitive. Really. Yeah, it's not punitive. The only other thing on the three of these things. <laughs> That's why we make them uh, non gender. Yeah, single user. <laughs> well, I, I have some stories about that. Uh, on the first one, the only other thing I see um, besides the gym in the closet is the separate toilet and break room for dispatch. That's right. Um, I haven't shown that yet, only because I don't know if it fits in the square. Exactly. Yet. I am waiting, waiting to do the layout of that room to see if I can squeeze okay. those extra things in there. Yeah. Right now, there's no break room in the entire building. Right. Um, and that's that's a concern of mine as well as having dispatch have their own separate toilet facility, or at least a shared toilet mm -hmm. that's on the corridor that yeah, maybe can serve for both. Um, but, you know, without having a training room here, the question is, can we shrink the lobby, toilet, public area of the building a little bit more to gain some more secure space in the back? Because uh, I'm still not convinced that this 9,000 square foot footprint is going to be able to hold everything comfortably, and I don't want to run into a situation where we're running out of space. Well, what are the dimensions for like a stairwell when I sit down with my graph paper and try it's always to... bigger than you think. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, you know, I sit down with my graph paper and I try to like take your footprint and lay things out and start out with eight feet and you'll be okay. Eight so wide usually, and how usually about eight to nine feet wide, depending on the thing, because each each run is four feet. So the, the middle portion between the two stairs has some dimension to it as well. <clears throat> about eight and a half feet, and then, um, and then depending on the floor to floor, it's seven inches per riser, and typically we like to get a fourteen foot floor to floor. But in this building, I've I've shrunk that down a little bit. Um, I think I'm at 
12 foot 10, 12 foot 6 foot, however it works out for the 7 inch rise. Um, yeah, 14 feet is a 7 inch rise dimension, so it would be uh, 13 foot, which would be 12 foot 10. Um, so that means that you need a certain number of risers, which translates to a certain number of treads. You figure out the tread dimension, then you get that middle piece, calculate the whole thing. And so usually I use somewhere around 20 feet. Um, but in this particular design, I actually did all the math out to prove that the stair works. Um, mainly because of stair one. I, I actually tried to figure out if we could put stair one in a smaller footprint by walking underneath the landing. You come down the stair, you turn around, and you go back out underneath the landing you just walked through. Uh, the headroom works. The problem is it makes it too long. Uh, the stair ends up getting you know, five or six feet extra length because the because of the way the risers work. Um, so you, you gain in the width dimension, but you lose in the length dimension, and the length was really what was killing us. So I went back to a traditional stair where the, now the, the quarter dog legs and you have the vestibule, and, yeah. and that's just how you exit the building. And how wide are you? How is five feet? Uh, five feet interior dimension. Right. <clears throat> so the length of the stairs is 20? Roughly, if you're pl feet. planning purposes, yeah. Um, I think in, in this case, it's going to be a little over 20. But. There's no space up front. If I come in to talk to the sergeant yeah. and yeah, that, talk to dispatch, dispatch calls the sergeant, I'm standing there. That's a layout issue. We'd have to bring you, buzz you through into the secure area. But, and, uh, what we call the Merck's room, but it's actually a panic room too. If someone came in and domestic violence victim or something, they, with the way we're spaced now, and a lot of police departments are now, come in and you have a secure room. That person can go in that room and just lock the door. If they're on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's an issue. Yeah, I would prefer to have an interview or conference room style room closer up to the front, where we only have one interview room or one conference room on the first floor. It's kind of centrally located, but it means you have to share it with a bunch of users. It also has to do double duty, right. like private and public. Yeah, we have um, people coming in for firearms licenses every three times a week. My firearm sergeant has them scheduled out, and uh, I prefer not to bring a bunch of people past dispatch and everywhere else if we can come up with something towards the lobby. So we should add, Essentially, what we're saying is we should add that room into the mix here. Yeah, we should add an extra conference room. Not an extra, but the, Even the missing Even if it's 10 by 12, room. I, you know, just a, a 10 by 10, I don't care. If it's yeah, that's what I figure. 10 by 12 yeah. would be sufficient for the purposes that you need. Um, it's a four-person room? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, yeah. at max. Yeah. max four person. Yeah. Um, the other question I had was emergency management. Now, they're not here in this building at all. Um, is that going to be a problem? I'm assuming it's a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, we went from having them having their entire own space to a shared room and now not even in the building. Now up at, if we shrink the training room down a little bit. We'll so it already room. is shrunken. Okay. The, the, I don't see any dimensions. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't put square footage on it, but right. it's about 850 square feet, which is what. A lot of the emergency management it. supplies and things like that we have stored in police department storage right now. Um, because I'm trying, traditionally new emergency management's been strictly police department, and I'm trying to get that into more diverse, bringing fire and other agencies into it. I'd rather have it with their own entity, with their own storage. So if some of the EOC is open, they can have access to what they need to get to. You know, we're buzzing up firefighters and town planners or whoever's coming up into the into the. EOC. But they have their stuff right there. Yeah, they'll have their stuff right there instead of having to go down into the sergeant's office or someplace else to get stuff. Well, we know we talked about when we operate the EOC, they're going to have sort of binder space and, mm -hmm. and workstation space there. But are you talking about additional storage beyond that? It's unless you have the workspaces permanently set up. Yeah. They. We need to break it down that's every the, time. That's the, the storage, storage that you're talking about. Yeah, okay. that's the type of storage. Well, what about uh, conference space? Because you had mentioned early on in the program study that that would be nice to have a, a, an actual office yes. location. That, that's a nice to have, 
isn't a must-have because I'm the emergency management director. Yeah. So if I need private conference, I'll pull people across the lobby into my office. Or the conference room. Oh, the conference room. Yeah. yeah. So th that is a nice to have, but I don't think it's a must-have. All right. I think you can you can incorporate a couple of storage closets built into training room. Well, we have one closet right now oh, okay. um, behind the elevator. And um, that may or may not be sufficient for all of the storage needs for that room. Because also keep in mind, uh, we will have movable tables and chairs. Yeah, and that's some place to roll, like at the library, some place to roll off the tables and chairs. We're doing self defense training. Or right. Defense so I, and I don't want to assume that one storage room is sufficient for all of our storage needs. With the elevator and the proximity to training and tables that are on carts, is the attic. Possibility if it's easy to move. You know, it's possible. It's another just another stop on the elevator. I mean, you know, you know what happens is when you, when you're operating at that level, minutes count. Right. And, and trying to create or assemble an EOC or, or what have you is. I I also think human nature comes to play too. If you yeah. have to move at one level, it's on. Even if it's easy like that, it's unlikely to. Yeah. If people just roll into the side of the room. Man, I think that's always the drive with the EOC because it's that you get 24-7 potential for an emergency and it starts right now. And do you have to mobilize everything for 20 minutes under a stressful situation and what what falls through the cracks during that, that time frame? Okay. So, I mean, it would seem at this point, Jeff, I, if you could update this a little bit, add some sizes. So the next iteration of this, assuming that what I've heard is, is sounds like this is a good direction to head in, is that we'll now draft this with walls and doors and furniture. And furniture will list the program space sizes as well as the actual square footage of each room mm -hmm. and try to fit in the storage, consider the public bathroom and a conference room up front sort of tweak the plan to make those things work <clears throat> and also have a site plan. So that's my goal for the next year. Okay. And it's obviously I'd like to get it to you sooner so you have some time to look at it, but that's the goal. I mean, I think what, what I've done is I've updated the probable cost and I use a, a delta of 9,300 square feet. Mm -hmm. And so you're at about 9,200 here. Yeah, with the possible addition of about yeah. 100 square feet for a conference room. I mean, I think one of our charges is to be innovative, efficient, and time is of the essence. And I think if we're within 100 feet of where we need to be, and, and we all agree on that, I mean, I'm confident we can make an overwhelming case that that is a critical component and anything less than that uh, would not be in the best, wouldn't fit within the innovative and efficient mm -hmm. charge that we have. But, I think we've come a long way to from eleven thousand down to the the low nine. So, any any questions, Eric? Um, from being out on site, <coughs> doing those test bits, and having a a slight thought if the building had to be rotated, is that, is that something to consider? I mean, is it just to keep that in the very back of your mind? Hopefully, we're not going there or does this plan work if it's just rotated um, we don't want to start doing extra work we don't want to start doing three different sets of plans but I think right now we're okay still okay. the I had sent you our we did some preliminary we did a site inspection all of the data you sent I passed along to the okay. civil engineer as well and the geotech yeah. so I think we're all on the same page it, I personally my experience is I, I was more relieved than concerned it, uh, the worst case scenario didn't it didn't fester there. Uh, we probably, John, I'm thinking we may have, uh, depending on soil conditions, you may have a, a double foundation along the back, you know, the back area as you get closer to the street. It, it appeared to be closer to just normal virgin soil. Right. So <clears throat> whether we rotate it or, or leave it perpendicular, it's going to be what geotechnical tell us, and then. What's the cost of right. of that? Um, I think it's still well within the budgets that we have, but I think being flexible at that stage. Yeah, 
would seem that where we have the masonry, which is really, at least the point ball would be where we might run into a double foundation. Mm -hmm. But again, let's see what the viewer says. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything that made me be concerned that we're, we're going to be driving 40 foot piles no. and gray beams and all that jazz. But Jeff, where are the rooms for the, I see the boiler with the like, sprinkler, electrical, and all that? So electrical is behind the bathrooms up here up okay. front, and the sprinkler room is in the back end of the boiler room, the SP right. oh, okay. sprinkler. Right. So the only thing we haven't identified is like a mechanical room for HVAC equipment yep. or handlers, that sort of thing. I, my assumption is that is going to be in the attic. Okay. And there'll be some units on, on grade, like condensing trailers or something. I mean, in, in tradition, what we run into in, in our, our space is if you get three feet of area above your ceiling for mechanical, going to have all horizontal units. Yeah, and, and we haven't started looking at systems either, but that could be also the case, that some of these systems are just going to be package units. Mm -hmm. John, any, any comments on the program's workspace allocations? Detaining them in a cell. Right. Yep. And so the two cells we have right now are separately sight and sound separated from each other. So either one could be used for a juvenile or a female or a male. And I've had um, conversations with the Department of Public Health and let them know we're planning the reconstruction of a police station. And they said when we get to the programming, um, they'd be glad to come down and talk to us right. about what exactly needs to go into it. What we need to do. Yeah, they have a whole list. And we end up usually sending them documentation at an advanced level of design because they're going to want to actually see all the fixtures that we're planning to use, all the space, the cell check buttons, the whole nine yards, so that we can get <coughs> preliminary sign off from them, although it's kind of their sign off. Um, and, and so that we will be essentially prepared to build, we'll build it, and then they'll come in and do their final inspection, and everything will pass. Okay, so we'll. We're pretty familiar with their process. Um, I don't know. It may still be helpful to have them come and talk to That's us up. if you want to want to hear what they uh, have to say. And Chief, my last question would have been uh, for dispatches or one or two dispatches that you have. It's so two stations. Is, yeah, two stations. So two on a normal yeah on a normal day, it's one person right. in there. But when we have something going on, we bring a second person in. The um, and I believe we're. I'll uh, refresh my memory. We actually we're buying dispatch consoles, but we're bringing over the equipment. The radios are uh, new and they're, uh, they're digital, so we can bring the radio equipment over. And, uh, furniture is going to be new. Furniture, so, I believe, that's going to be new. Yeah, we may want to start looking at looking at you, Kevin, because no, we don't have right anything. Right thing. So I already have a good idea of what we're doing with the consoles, okay. equipment-wise. Not for here, for another project. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, but I was going to say, if, if, we can, if we can get somebody involved that can actually give us a layout, that would reconfirm some of these early preliminary things. Just remind me later on, I have those I can give us here. So I just got like to frame the layout. Eaton, or is it? Um, Evans. Evans. Okay. Okay. All right, so moving on, project schedule. I. Just for the sake of ease, I printed out, killed another tree to, uh, to go over this. And, and thank you, Jeff. This, the level of detail in this is, uh, is great. I think what we need to do is, is compare your dates to, I'm assuming you matched them to Fridays. So yeah, so these are all Fridays okay. for building committee meetings. And I think for the rest, uh, I think so. As, as a committee, why don't we all review these so that it, it aligns? Well, are there any extra copies I was going to hand them out to the? Uh, we, yeah, we have two. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Okay. And, and again, you all receive these electronically. So. All right. 
right. So, uh, I, I think for me, I certainly schedule and budget are the two drivers you know, for, for the committee. On, uh, on the budget, Mike, what is the name of the company that uh, services or maintains your comm tower now? Uh, TCS Communications. TCS. Um, okay. All right, because I think what would be helpful is to, uh, we're carrying about 140 k from a design and replacement of a comm tower. If we have the ability to reutilize or revitalize what we have, uh, that's low hanging fruit from a budget standpoint too. I had initial conversations with um, the um, technician, uh, Todd, yeah. about that. And he said it's not impossible, but they have to get up there and look and see what they have. And the design of the building would obviously come into play with that too, because we might be able to do something right off the top of the building as okay. opposed to having a standalone tower. And I don't know what. It yeah, I mean, today I, I, I've seen it go from an erector set to the monopole with Cat 6 cables coming down to the control room. So I, I don't know the first thing about that okay. stuff, but. <laughs> well, we have a consultant for that too. Yeah, it'd be good to get it before in the design now that it's a change of order. Right, and if we're going to put something on the building, that is super critical to understand because, in my experience, structural engineers get very uh, nervous about attaching <coughs> towers to buildings because of the loads. If it's simply just an antenna, that's right. not a problem. But if it's an actual tower, they get really nervous about that. Was there a thought of also just utilizing existing? Com tower that's in place oh, yeah. and then connecting that to the building. Oh, that's absolutely. The, that's the cheapest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, if that if that com tower can be reused, yeah. but let's we'll do that. I mean, it, 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 it would seem to have that there. It, it could still have a shared use with the fire. I the think the only way. at that point the only question would be the routing. You know, getting the wire right. back and forth in a way that doesn't hamstring the, the town in the future if they're developing the site. <clears throat> Just how we lay out the conduit bank will, exactly. be, the, will be the key. That's okay. it. I'll, um, I'll schedule TCS, I'll call them today, schedule them to come down and do a thorough inspection. Yeah, have them do an evaluation if they could and a preliminary mm -hmm. budget to you know, refurbish or upgrade the existing power. Yeah, updating it right. to the standards we need and then just do an evaluation on the structure itself. Is it, in a reasonable condition. All right, so obviously I think that, that the next big step is as we close out space planning, it's uh, the geotechnical test pits so we determine truly what we got for subterranean structural need. Uh, and in porosity for, for drainage. So just looking at our schedule, you're proposing our next meeting, Jeff, the 25th of January. Yeah. And at that time, you'd have your site plan with test pits on it. Yeah, that my, my, my hope, my original hope was that we would be able to actually undertake the test pits this month. Okay. Um, well, assuming you, 25, the, I just circulated via email. Yeah, if you if you do that, I mean, uh, we're not going to decide where the test pits are. That's going to be your call and you know, and your and your, and your, uh, your team. So I think, uh, from a standpoint, from a town standpoint, if if you had the specification of what you're looking for them to do in the usual format, and the the proposed locations, you know, you, which what you generally do. Mm -hmm. You could send that out. We we could uh, look at that. To, we could just take them into consideration and release that right. you know, upon arrival to procurement. Yep. Because that's going to be the critical. Exactly. Uh, hopefully, we don't find we have another layer of. Just three under my you know, under the end of yeah. mm -hmm. We were doing a project in the back bay, and <laughs> where we, we dig down 
26 feet into pure gravel. Yeah. So and, and it's, well, it's the two feet of sediment below that that mm -hmm. causes all the problem, but that first uh, 25 feet was just, uh, looked like Plum Island sand and gravel. On That's the side. problem. Probably was. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably part of the Needham Hills. Okay. Eric, on a geotechnical, mm -hmm. any thoughts on that besides what we've... Uh, no, I think Jeff laid it out before is he would say locate 10 test pits and then we would, we would get the guy up there for a day and he'd get five flights. Yeah, I don't know um, in a day that they're going to struggle to get five, but I think that's my hope is get five. Um, five, there's just the four corners in the center. Maybe the center, although we may want to actually uh, do a uh, boring where we want to put the infiltration system. It may also be helpful to do, actually. Um, cool. I've gone back and forth with engineers about that, so. The, the one thing that we talked about, Jeff, was when you lay out your test pits, if the, it was punitive to go perpendicular, we had to go parallel mm -hmm. to incorporate. Extra boring. Yeah, just, uh, that's if we don't need them, it'll give us some drainage calcs anyway. Yep, cool. yeah, that, that's, that's a good point, because we'll probably put the infiltration wherever the building isn't. Which is under the parking, exactly. Which is on that side, exactly. Which will catch some of the corners, anyways. Yeah. So, is it if everything gets set in motion, Jeff? Would when is it? Are we a month out for that, or are we actually? Um, I know that they were trying. They could potentially schedule in two weeks. Um, whenever I can get them, go ahead. Um, I asked him to ask his drillers to see what their availability is. It looks like two weeks. It's the notice right now. Um, so I think you know, as soon as we got them out there, we would know in anecdotally what they find. We'd get the report for a while, but we would know generally what's out there. If you hit or clay, exactly. <laughs> Who's been doing most of the boring? I mean, Cardi used to be Cardi. Yeah. 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 No, I'm, I don't know who's out there doing it now. I haven't seen a driller's report in a while. I see Allied a lot. Allied? Yeah. yeah. South New Hampshire. So obviously the next 30 days are critical because we're, we're closing out a lot of, uh, of open-ended items. Yeah, so the idea here overarching idea is that we'd end schematic design um, in late February and begin our design development phase, which is really when we're going to put the engineering together for submissions to the various boards um, with the target of um, file, filing in May for hearings in June. Now, if any of that can be moved up, if we make progress in schematic design faster, we've got more faster, we can release DD faster, all those things can be moved up. But based upon the hearing, the schedule of CONCOM and um, uh, planning board um, for the site plan review, we should be able to manage um, moving things up. CONCOM only has one hearing a month, but... Well, we're going to... I with our meeting, what my meeting after the fact with the that kind of administrator is, both CONCOM and the planning board can schedule an additional meeting That's to what accommodate the schedule. Say, and, figured they'd probably yeah. potentially yeah. accommodate us. I mean, the, the way I see this playing out is we want to do our two week public notice period, you know, consecutively with CONCOM and planning, even if it requires continuance of a meeting. Yes, it but does. just so that we can shave off. Uh, 30, 40 days of. There's no sense to do two separate mailings. Well, it just <laughs> makes it easier to do it all at the same time. Uh, Agreed. In conjunction. And then certainly scheduling meetings so that we get a 21 day waiting period after the fact, a 14 day uh, public notice, and they're going to have 30 days in between. Yep. So. They're gonna, you'll have a meeting, it'll be continued. We resolve whatever's left and goes to vote. So, so if we can close that out in 60 days total, yeah, I think that's the ideal. That's the ideal. 
And I think it's critical because it hit the price point of getting this out to bid September uh, and coming out of the ground in November where all of our site work gets kicked off before we really get into winter conditions will we'll have a cost impact, cost savings. Yeah, if we could start, you know, late August, we could feed a lot of that concrete work. Slabs could walk started earlier. So why don't we not to spend too much time on schedule, so I think we're we're at March. If everyone could quickly just check their calendars for availability for the dates that have been listed by by Jeff on the schedule. What are the expectations for cost estimate? Producing documents at the end of the phase. Estimator need obviously needs some time to do it. The more information you have, the longer it takes <coughs> for the next round. Yep. And obviously so it's we'll typically like about a three week time period. So as soon as I release the, the documents to the estimator, it needs two weeks minimum to do his estimate. And then I usually want some time before we're rushing into a meeting to vet it with my engineers, make corrections if necessary. You know, Kevin's gonna look at it as well and you get on the same page and be able to present a unified response to you on the cost. So typically the way I've structured the schedule is that we will get to the end of a phase, you'll essentially approve us to, to go to the next phase, and at the same time as we're moving to the next phase, we'll be doing the cost estimating of the previous phase. So we don't lose any time waiting for the cost estimate to come back and reviewing it. So we will end up reviewing the cost estimate, you know, portion of the way into DD and then a portion of the way into CDs. The only other estimate that we'll do in the middle of CDs will happen prior to going to bid. So we'll get the estimate, the last estimate that we'll do, and we'll be able to make a decision based upon that estimate, whether or not we feel comfortable bidding per the schedule um, and advertising and all that. So it would seem that scheduling a technical meeting with CONCOM and planning at some point prior to completion of docs would probably be the way to go. We've got that scheduled for the 30th of April. That's the site plan review pre-application oh, okay. conference. Okay. That's okay. a gotcha. requirement. Gotcha. And uh, that obviously, we have to have a, enough engineering done so that we can present, mm -hmm. or that's something they can react to, um, but, but not all of it so that we can still make changes. Um, we would, prior to that point, we'd have gotten our first cost estimate in mid-March to review. Um, so we will know about a month before that meeting uh, what the cost looks like. And, and I, I have to say that we had sent out a request for information to all the various committee chairs and boards and everyone responded in a, a timely uh, fashion. And uh, Martha Taylor, uh, many thanks to her, she put it all together into a uh, organized schedule for us which was a lot of work, but I think helpful for all. Very helpful, yeah. extremely helpful. Yeah, it's very nice. I, you all have copies of this if you need it. Any other discussion on schedule at this point? I just suggest that we all look at the data yep. completely for uh, <coughs> availability, and but it's something we can report back to. We, we don't yep. need to spend a lot of a lot of time on that. Tell me these in May. Town meeting? Yeah. April. April? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I, I want to say it, it is, I think it is May now. Is it May now? It got moved around simply because of uh, voting, of, of yeah, municipal voting. You know, I, we, it's a good point, Kevin. We'll, uh, we'll create that. We'll add that to the schedule for the 18th. Do you, anticipate, do you know what you would like to have for that meeting? Yeah, or is it just an, an update? I, I, I think it would just be a, an update, a status update. I think what we'll probably do as a committee after today's meeting and we, and we finalize uh, all our submittals, will seek to get on the agenda for the Board of Selectmen at one of their upcoming meetings and 
provide them with a status update of where we're at introducing the schedule and uh, what, what issues we're, we're still working through, if any. And that, that certainly would happen when, what, I think they meet with the second and fourth Tuesdays. Yes. So we may very well get on their agenda for the last week of January to, to provide that, that update, which I think would be helpful for them. Kevin, any, any other comments on schedule for you? Or? No, the only one I have a conflict right now is on the 25th, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Okay. I mean, I think some of this stuff here, if we're not going to change a meeting date if one of us is missing, to be honest. I think we can electronically, we can all get up to speed. I mean, Jeff has to be at everything. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I can make all these dates. Yeah. <laughs> I have this guy. I, 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 how did I guess that? That would be good. Yeah. So I think that'll be the rule that uh, I think the Fridays work best for, for most of us anyway. So. All right, there's no other questions, Chief? Anything for you on schedule? No, I added them all to my calendar. Oh, so, going down the list. We discussed the re site plan review. That's going to come in uh, within the next two weeks on mm -hmm. the geotechnical. So, estimate of probable cost. I took your last. I just took your your last estimate and updated it from a square footage standpoint. I used a delta of 9,300 square feet. Sure. But John, John and I were. Uh, Thank you. John came back with a couple of suggestions, okay. adding adding a couple of components here. This is just going to be our cheat sheet for a committee to yeah. to track. Uh, So currently, making the the adjustment from the down to the 9,300 square feet as our current yeah. target, our projected cost with four percent construction escalation and a ten percent project contingency is at 6.7 million. I mean, the, the, the two glaring things that stand out to me are the communication tower. Communication tower design that's that's 140k. Certainly, some of the furnishings and uh, allowances for computer networking. Um, and I, I still think that we're within the target range of the 6.5. Mm -hmm. But I what I don't want to do is sacrifice function and being able well being efficient and not being innovative. If if 9300 is the square footage or it's a fraction more than that, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable that we can make an overwhelming case to, to get this right. Any other questions? We, from a format standpoint, Kevin or John, <coughs> this is just something for us as, as we start to process paper that uh, we, 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 we have everything on a, a simple spreadsheet to track. Because uh, we, I also put together a budget sheet that you'll be able to track. Okay. And, um, I'll import these numbers, but I, but I know some of these numbers are already incorrect, so we'll have to adjust those as we go along. Yeah, I mean, I, this is just a static point to track. Yeah. I'll put it in, and uh, you'll have it um, probably uh, tomorrow or uh, Monday. Okay, great. And then again, please, it's not the it's, it's a living document; it'll change all the time. Um, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> No, yeah, it, we, it, it, we just keep import, importing numbers to it, and you'll see where we go. It's just a collection of data for us. I think what the other thing we, we should be doing too is, for a town account standpoint, is projecting cash flow for the next 90 days. So that they can anticipate, you know, if, if typically we're going to be uh, procuring 250K worth of services over the next 90 days, because of A, B, C, D, I think I want to give a kind of a heads up now so that they can uh, certainly make arrangements for funding. <coughs> okay, item seven, update on RFIs. Uh, my 
Dr. Taylor once again saves the day, makes it easy for all of us. But, uh, there was copies of all the communications that were sent in on your, the live packet that came from planning board building at CONCOM. So I'm good, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse 9 to 8 on communications. We had received uh, some communications from residents. They were attached to your your packet. So if we go back to that original packet, we can go through that. As you get towards the back. So the, the very last page uh, was a, a suggestion that was, that was offered by uh, Anthony Matthews. And it was about considering utilizing the adjoining fireman's hall uh, as a shared space so that training or EOC uh, could be possibly used over there to either create a savings uh, or provide additional space to the standalone police station. Uh, the I put together a, a sample response to this, and we have a chance to look at it. There's another package here about doing the test Oh yeah, you know what? That was <coughs> another, and this was something that came in after. The, yeah, that, well, that was just another question that came in from Fred Thurlow that just wanted to make the right. So the, the question uh, was posed back on 1217 uh, about basically trying to utilize the fireman's hall. And, and, and going through all of the, the, the requirements and, and what typically seems to happen is that uh, it would be nice to be able to do that, but it would always be shared space and it wouldn't always be readily available uh, for an emergency situation simply because it's being used by the fire department. Uh, when we were doing our test holes, uh, the fireman's hall is a little bit smaller than it once was. Uh, there's a number of offices being built there. I think the big conflict is, is being used as an EOC center. That could be a 24-7. It, it certainly is a 24-7 issue. And you simply could have a, an emergency during scheduled elections. Uh, and you... How do you interrupt the voting process for a federal election or a local election? Well, in some of the overseas, they call in your entire department, so you'll have four. No, well, as, as I said, and, and again, I think it, when you're having more of it, when you're using it as an emergency operations center, uh, time matters. It, you know, public safety, public life is at risk, and it, it's more critical that that be opening a cabinet door or plugging your computer and having furniture in place uh, just depending whether it's a storm a crisis some event at the school uh, the level of stress and urgency gets to a point that uh, we, we need to make it easier rather than more cumbersome so the, the for me to, to come to the conclusion I reached it was the structural integrity of the, the fireman's hall, it doesn't meet any of the current building seismic or wind standards. Can the fireman's hall be secured? Uh, it, it can't be secured solely from a police EOC training center because it's shared space. 
So what materials, what equipment has to be either transported from point A to point B? Uh, and then the other thing is this, uh, it's in a floodplain. Uh, we, we have some other issues there. So the conclusion that I've suggested is Fireman's Hall was built to an older outdated building code does not meet current wind speed construction guidelines for this region, which is a region three, lacks any seismic bracing precautions and cannot be secured. The proposed standalone police station would meet these requirements. The, those three criteria is on the checklist of what you use to, to consider locating an EOC. Um, so that, that's where I, that's my, my recommendation to the committee for review. Well, also, is under just strictly police operations, three, maybe four times a year, we have events going on that police wise. And Newbury's quieter compared to most towns, but sure. three or four times a year, we'll have multiple police agencies in. Um, two months ago, we were looking for an arson suspect. I had people in from the state police, the FBI, mm -hmm. ATF, and 30 or 40 people in, in giving a debriefing. You need a room like that, and that can't be done over at the fire station. There's a lot of privacy issues and things like that, logistic things. So those are the types of things. It's not just a training room. It's not going to sit unutilized. It's an EOC. It's, it's a debriefing room. It's, it's, it's a muster room if I have to call the whole department and sure. update them on something. you know, and There's a lot of times we do that. So yeah, we need that space. So, I mean, I, that, I, that's I, not a like to have. That's a muster no, room. No, no, no. I, and, I, and, and, I mean, that's where it gets back to being innovative. So we meet the 21st century. I listed six potential functions, emergency operations center, tactical operations, combined operations center, school threat assessment and response. Yeah. Got to be mission critical, 24-7 operations. And, and more importantly, when you have an event going on, you need a media command center where that you can keep the public and the media up to speed, especially during a if it's a storm type of emergency, you know, a natural disaster. Why don't we just circulate that around the table? I, I think from what we've, we've heard that if we touch the fire station, we can gauge it. There's a lot more that would need to be updated as the, for the whole station in order to have that room operate in the station. Um, we did kick the fire station down the road to what they need, so they've taken it upon themselves. Money was approved, appropriated, and passed meetings for those offices to be built out. And you know, the town is now, they're now just getting to that. Um, and part of that is you know, some of the program we thought that we still might have a chance to combine or put some spaces in the police station in the future, but we also made that decision to, um, to not do that. This was sent out electronically to all of you. Jen, let me grab your copy. I want to, they haven't seen it because we haven't, because where it was a, a draft recommendation, it's not. So guys, this is, tell me this is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. And again, what, what a, this stuff, once it becomes part of the record today, gets scanned and it'll go up and then we have to do that. That would be my main comment about the possibility of the outside the space is that if you if the town doesn't have a space that can meet all the criteria for an EOC, you're going to need the things that the chief already described in this building anyways. Regardless of whether it's an EOC or not, and <coughs> you don't have a space that's already ready to just move in, set up, meets all our criteria, you're going to have, as Eric said, spend a whole bunch of money getting it up to speed, and already building a facility that's already going to have a space that can be used for short, much shorter money to do it in the new facility than somewhere else in town, unless you have that space, and I don't know that you do. Well, I think the reality is, is the fire department has plans. Or their space, and 
And I'm, I'm actually wondering how they're going to be accommodating voting now that they've probably well, consumed about a third of that space. But I, I think more importantly, being able to secure it and have it as a, as, as a single task functioning area. <coughs> I mean, EOC's at the state level, they've got the bunk. It's locked until you need it, and it's only used for, for, for an emergency operations center. If you want to build a bunker, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, no. no. Okay. So, any any other any other questions on that, John? Any any no, comments you want to add? Kevin, how about yourself? Nope. Oh, like I said before, I'll, I'm gonna, oh, yeah. as far as that letter goes, no. Okay. Chief, you're concur. Yes. Well, can we entertain a motion to convert this a sample response to a, an actual response? I recommend that we. Uh, Make this an actual. Okay, second. I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, Tony, I did, we, what we're trying to do is be as detailed and as responsive. Uh, we certainly are always looking for opportunities to be efficient. Uh, but I, I have to say, I was quite surprised when we were doing our <laughs> test pits and it, it, it became clear, I think, to me at that point that if you don't totally control the space, which is the case, uh, but it's a good exercise to go through, and it's the opportunity we should always be looking at for this. I have one other, Jim, let me finish. I have one other communication. Uh, Fred Thurlow had sent in an email after I had bundled all of this stuff and sent it out, uh, copies of it. Fred just had some simple suggestions. And it was, So the four items that Fred has mentioned, or the three items that Fred has mentioned, certainly have been uh, been on the forefront. We've discussed these at different times. But I think quickly to go over item one, a one-story building with simple roof design, uh, certainly is uh, something to be considered. But we've already made the determination that the most economical cost-wise is a simple two-story, smaller footprint type structure. The second item, grants or funding sources should be sought for, for solar panels. Uh, certainly that's something that we can do. And I think, Eric, you've, you've been talking about looking at different opportunities like that. Mm -hmm. And three, uh, Fred raises the concerns about soil conditions, uh, which tend to lend to having a smaller footprint rather than a, a larger footprint. So I, I think good points, well taken. But the, the record already has really addressed these uh, over the past. So. Any other uh, communications that we've received from anyone, any, anyone on the board? Have a, any further comments? comments? No. Okay. All right, we're going to open this up to citizens' concerns simply because we wanted to do the communications part first because it, I think it helped out with answering some questions in advance. Jim, just if you would, if you could get up, give your name and Jim, address. Now, Jim Moran, Elm Street, on the handout for the year, you just gave us on the training room. What is the size now of the training room? It's about 800 square feet, Jim. Uh, 800? Yeah. It, okay. We, we're still in the making sausage stage of that, where that uh, it, it's no longer in excess of 1,000 square okay. feet. Um, it is, an, is that, in fact, big enough to be an emergency operations center when you start to talk about all your items one through six at the bottom of that memo? It is a 800 square foot, and maybe the chief can address that. What's the question? The, the question is, is 800 square feet yeah. big enough 
yes. to, to do everything that's been listed here yes. as an emergency. This seems to cover everything. Right now, we use the, the old Selectman's meeting room as our yeah. training room slash EOC, and yeah. it's been working out. That's about okay. 760 okay. square feet. It's working out okay. Maybe the size of the room was certainly a little small. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe a little yeah. small, but yeah. These. Again, it, it, it's a box we were kind of moving around there. There could be some additional storage <laughs> made in there. We that but, made well, it shrunk down, Jim, a little bit yeah. because of other needs up there. But well, that that being said, we also have a conference room up in the second floor, also. Yes. What would be the difference between them? So they're, they're two, just a smaller room, a smaller conference room. Yes, if you're having a meeting with three or four people private meeting the privacy. So yeah, there's the possibility that things would be going on in both me both rooms at the same oh, time. Oh absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um <coughs> it's a little difficult for me to accept the fact on the second page that the finals hall is a multi use space. It cannot be dedicated to this. It, it's four thousand square feet. It's hard for me to believe that you couldn't isolate a thousand square feet and do the same thing in that. Um, it's already there. Have you been in there lately? Yeah, Jim, they, 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 I, they I understand, I yeah. understand that they're doing temporary reconfiguration, but I'm saying that's not temporary. Well, I, I don't know what they're doing because it's, it's hard to figure out what nobody's saying what's going on. But mm -hmm. I do know it's 4,000 square feet. And I do know that what's going, being put in there is not 4,000 square feet. So 4,000 square feet is a huge footprint. Um, couldn't you take a thousand square feet and use it? But this it, room, I'm going to guess, is 20 by 30, 6, 700, 800 feet? 24 by 36. So that the area of this is 24 <laughs> by 40, so it's 800 square feet we're sitting in now? Roughly, yeah. Okay. And this holds at least 50 people seating plus your conference room. I think the point that. So the what, point, the point that, I'm making is that to rule out and say it cannot be dedicated to me is. I can't accept that as fact. I've been in the room many times, as everybody has. If you can't dedicate a thousand square feet of existing space, beyond me comprehending what this statement says. I think what you have to look at, Jim, uh, and from a realistic standpoint, is that the, the firemen and the fire department have their needs, and they're going to utilize their space. And then you have the overflow, the wild card, which is voting. Uh, beyond that, as, as Jeff has mentioned, if you're going to have to have the, techno, the technical uh, technology capabilities at the fireman's hall and you're going to be duplicating uh, the same type of uh, access, the same types of equipment, that uh, what do you do? You're going to have two sets of computers that we can be using in-house now that can just be popped over or and more importantly from from my perspective is that having this in the police station is is critical it's time it's time sensitive to respond and just by the mere fact that the fireman's hall will not meet the same structural <coughs> needs sprinkled uh, wind loads it, it's a 1960s building. Your, your comments have been is, is taken, uh, but we have decided as a committee that we are going to proceed with a uh, EOC training room within the structure. We we have currently the square footage, and where we currently have a certain uh, understanding that we're within budget of what's been approved. And this falls under us operating in an innovative and efficient way while being sensitive to our scheduling and time needs and not getting into uh, what other departments are going to be doing with their space. So what's your next question, Jim? I think I've presented, I, I can't buy your argument that the building isn't up to code. Regardless of the building, what is 100 years old? We use buildings? all over the world that are 100 years old that are used for everything under the sun. So An emergency operations center during a category two hurricane can't have the roof blowing off. 
That's the last saying. time the roof blew off in the last 40 years, the fire department. The chances of that happening, Bob, are astronomical. But these are where we, as a board and a committee, need to anticipate and analyze. We are within budget, and we have the square footage. So, again, your, your, your point's well taken, Jim, and we, we've taken the time to provide a detailed response to a recommendation, <coughs> and but the decision's been made that we're going to proceed uh, as, <coughs> as mentioned with having it in-house. So we'll move on to your next question, or if there's anyone else that has a question. Fred, just, we need to get up front here so the camera can see you, identify yourselves. Fred Davis, Main Street, Brightfield. Uh, <coughs> first of all, I want to thank this committee for the work they're doing. You know, all we've ever wanted was a well-built, high-quality police station, conservatively priced, conservatively sized. And, you know, I, I think I think coming in at around 9,000 square feet, Well, the chief is definitely going to need room to talk with people, you know, um, you know, maybe a day program or something like that, or, or, or other police, you know, so, I mean, we're, we're, we're disagreeing about 800 square feet. Well, no, we're discussing, it's not yeah. disagreeing, we're, just, we're having a discussion. But, uh, but I'm thinking you've already went from 11 down to 8, so <clears throat> if you could fit that in to the budget, which you said you I think everything looks really good. You know, my biggest concern is boring holes. Yeah, I, and <coughs> again, I think you're right on the money there. You know, you've really cut back a lot of things, and you don't want to get to the point where we eliminate stuff that we think we need 10 years from now because we can't do that. So I, I think the committee, in my opinion, Thank you. <clears throat> Gents, anyone else? And Tony, any? It was your, it was your, 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 your comment and suggestion that we were. No, I right um, no. Nope. Okay. It was just an idea and <clears throat> redundancy it, of. It, it, you know what? And on its face, it was, it was certainly worthy of looking at it through a, through a, you know a detailed lens. The when we walked in there after the test boring and, and saw that about a third of it was gone and, and talking uh, to the fire department staff, they've they got more plans going on in there too for additional space to a point that uh, the voting, voting location, I'm not sure how that's all going to work now, but that's something that town's probably going to have to look at. All right, any, any other <coughs> matters other than just our next meeting date which we're going to just follow the 25 yeah 25 mm -hmm. okay all right a motion to adjourn a motion that we adjourn the meeting second second okay all in favor aye all right i think uh i think we're good gents you the information you've been getting uh Certainly, I hope that helps keep everyone in the loop on. Well, it's certainly appreciated, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, certainly appreciated. So what we <clears throat> generated today, that we're presented today, which honestly I think is only going to probably be the uh, the schedule, the minutes, and then the response, uh, Tony, to your suggestion, will get scanned and that will go out as additional documentation for today's meeting. All right. Thank you, guys.